Hi there, welcome back to physics. Um, it is week eight of quarter one, and this week we are gonna spend time reviewing the difference between the two types of projectiles. So two weeks ago, we talked about horizontal projectiles. Horizontal projectiles are the type that start up, have a push or a pull, they have a velocity in the horizontal direction, and then, because gravity then causes them to fall, they also move in the Y direction. So they start up and then they move down like that. These are the easier of the two types. These are the type that always have two things given to start. The initial velocity in the Y direction is always equal to zero, and the acceleration in the Y direction is always a negative 9.8. So we get a push in the x direction, a velocity in the x direction, a horizontal velocity, and then they fall due to gravity and take on that half parabola shape. For these guys, time is time. You don't have to worry about having a half time or a full time um, if you're at the top or at the end because these guys just start here and go down. There's just one time. The same time is gonna go into both sets of equations. Anything in the x direction, you're gonna use this equation, vx equals delta x over delta t, the velocity in the x direction is equal to the horizontal distance divided by the time, and the height, delta y, this equation right here will help you find that. Um, because vi y is zero, for this type of projectile, this first chunk cancels out. Because the VIY is equal to zero, VIY delta T has to be zero, so that first chunk cancels out. All right, the second type of projectile is one in which you start down, you get kicked, shot, thrown, whatever, up at an angle, it hits a peak, and then it falls back down. So we have this full range of motion and these are the ones where we have to solve for VIY and VX. In order to get off the ground, you have to have a velocity in the Y direction. And in order to move to the side, you have to have a velocity in the X direction. So we are going to have to solve for those. Neither of those are going to be equal to zero. Um, the way that we solve for them if we're given an angle is to use sine and cosine. So if you look at the top, the actual velocity, so as a projectile leaves, it leaves with an actual velocity. That is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. That velocity is a combination of the y velocity that is needed to get it up off the ground and the x velocity that's needed to push it to the side. When you combine those two using a mathematical principle in right triangles, as long as you know the angle that it's shot at, you can use sine and cosine in order to solve for them. So when you're looking for your triangle, we always put the velocity, sorry, as the hypotenuse, and then the angle goes in there. The VIY, Y means up and down, so it's always the vertical portion of the triangle, and the VX, X means side to side, horizontal, so it is always um, that side of the triangle. In order to solve for each of them, if you know the velocity and the angle, you can use sine and cosine in order to solve for the VX and the VIY. Because VX is always adjacent to the angle, it would be the cosine of the angle is equal to VX over the hypotenuse of V. Because VIY is always the opposite side of the angle, you have to use sine. The sine of the angle is equal to opposite VIY over hypotenuse of V. So step one, if you have the angle and the actual velocity, you always use sine and cosine to solve for the VX and VIY. From there, we have to remember that the VX is always the same. It is constant the entire time. The minute you find it, it never changes. The VIY is the initial, the initial vertical velocity, and then at, in the Y direction, as it goes up, it slows down, it hits a peak of zero at the peak, and then the velocity increases as it comes back down in the Y direction. So we kind of have to use that in order to figure out how to use this third equation right here in order to find time. To find time at the top, 
there is only one spot where one of the y velocities is equal to zero. When you throw something up, you give it a velocity, it hits zero at the top. So at the peak, right here and right there only, the final velocity in the y direction is equal to zero. So to find the time at the top where the VFY is equal to zero, you get to use that new equation. It's an old equation, A equals VF minus VI over delta T. We change it into AY equals VFY minus VIY over delta T. It just shows that it only works in the Y direction. That's why there's little Ys there. And you can use that knowing that AY is negative 9.8, VIY is whatever you solve it to be using your angle. Um, and you can find, find time as long as you remember that is the time at the top. Only the time at the top. Um, it can't give you any other time because there's no place else where you can make that VFY equal to zero. If you're looking for how high something is, so as you look at the diagram here, the maximum height, how tall it goes, that is right here. So when you're trying to find how high, you're trying to find delta Y, the vertical distance, the maximum height occurs at the top, so you gotta use the corresponding time, the time at the top. When you're looking for delta X, as you look at that diagram, delta X, the horizontal distance, the total distance that it travels, um, that is all the way at the end. You cannot use the time halfway through because that won't get you. That will only get you half the horizontal distance. You have to multiply that time by two in order to get the full amount of time and use that. So anytime you're using the X equation, you have to use the full time. Anytime you're using the Y equations, you have to use the time at the top, the half time. We also did one other type of problem in which we took um, no angle and were able to solve for VX and VIY without an angle. Uh, and what we had was only the total distance traveled and the total time. So as a projectile goes, we did a couple of lab stations in which we were given the total distance over here and then the total time that it took to travel. Knowing those two numbers right there, we can calculate the velocity and the angle that something was shot at. Um, in order to do that, we have to break down our right triangle and put the velocity as the hypotenuse, Vx and Viy. The angle will go inside of it right there. And what we have to do is we have to use equations. So instead of we don't have an angle, we're going to have to solve for it. We have to use equations to calculate Vx and Viy. All right, the easy one is the Vx. We can calculate that easily if we know the total distance horizontally and the total time. Those two things are always given to you so you in this type of problem, so you just divide in order to find that. Um, in order to find the VIY, you use the AY equation. AY is always equal to gravity, negative 9.8. VFY is equal to zero as long as you remember that that equation only works at the top. Um, if you know the total time, if you know the time at the top, right there, that is what goes into this equation. Using this equation, you have to have the time at the top, and then you can solve for VIY by multiplying the time to the other side by gravity. Once you know VX and VIY, you know that side and that side of the triangle, you can use the Pythagorean theorem. That squared plus that squared gives you that squared right there. And then finally, in order to find the angle, you can use any trig function because you have all three sides of your triangle once you use the equations. Um, I always use tangent. Tangent is always opposite over adjacent, so it would be VIY over VX. You do have to, when solving for an angle, you have to use the inverse button, the second button. So you would type in second tangent of whatever this number is divided by whatever number that is. If these type of problems throw you off, um, we had two lab stations in the angled lab, and then we had two problems on the back of the angle problem, and they have steps on the back of there as well. All right, so that is just a brief rundown of what we have learned for our two types of projectiles, the horizontal projectiles, things that start up and just go down. The VIY is equal to zero, and you don't have to worry about time. There's just one time. 
When you look at things that are shot at an angle, they go up and then back down. You have to solve for Vx and Viy. Neither of those are equal to zero. Usually you can use sine and cosine, but if you can't, if you don't have an angle, then you just have to use equations to do it. Hopefully this was helpful. For the week coming up, we're gonna have two review assignments. One is gonna be just projectiles, and then the other one is gonna be all of quarter one. So please get started on them as soon as you can so that you can ask questions along the way, send me pictures in the Remind app, um, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you.